Hey guys, Greg here, back at PAX East 2018. I'm with Alex and Alex, no relation. Yep. <laughs> Alex and Alex, and they're about to, they're gonna talk about their game, Party Hard 2. Now, do you guys like to party hard? No one has ever made this joke. Yeah. You're very original. Thank you so much for I'm having so us. so smart and funny. <laughs> Every, my mom says I'm yeah. really funny. I'm sure she does, but actually, <laughs> the idea and the whole like concept and inspiration was you know how you have this horrible, horrible neighbor that just gets a party going at 3 a.m. and you're laying in your bed, you hear the bass just pounding in your pillow, and you go like, I want to murder everyone there in very creative ways. Come on, <laughs> let's admit, you had that fantasy. So, I know I did, because so I had a neighbor like that. So you guys hit, you guys made Party Hard, and yeah. then we spoke earlier and I was talking about, oh, this is like Party Hard cartoon, ty ty Tycoon. Uh -huh. So talk about your first game and then a little yeah. bit Tycoon, and then we'll get into this one. So the original one was a Game Jam game uh, made by Pinnacle Games that Alex is part of here. Uh, and it was just done like in a weekend during the Global Game Jam. And it was made in Flash as, you know, like just a scrappy prototype. It got so much traction amongst YouTubers because it was just like really obnoxious, funny, dark humor that we decided to make that into a full game. We spent nine months crunching on that and um, we actually invented Twitch integration with it. We were the first game on uh, Steam that had Twitch integration inside of it. And then we spent a, uh, a little bit of time on making Party Hard Tycoon, which was like a spin-off where you could manage a party. And now we're back with a full-on sequel, Party Hard 2, brand new engine, brand new visuals, everything is new and it's shaping up really fantastically. So the goal of the game, like you said before, is to, you're crashing a party and you're trying Your to- Your goal is to stop the party. To stop by the party. By any means. And murder everybody, either, either, and you win by either murdering everybody at the party or completing a list of certain objectives. Well, let, let's just say stop the party and then not dive into details to BPC here, right? <laughs> I actually had a lot of press uh, email me about like, you know, because uh, the game Hatred was coming out around the same time as the original. Oh, yeah. And uh, we we're like, well, God, you have a game where you murder people. And my reply would be a gif of a dancing bear wearing sunglasses. Because that was one of the characters. Because you got to realize that, you know, this is a fantasy game, right? There is, uh, it's not real. So uh, the gameplay plays a lot like Hitman if it was a top-down game, right? Right. So uh, it's very tactical and you need to be aware of your surroundings and figure out what is the most optimal way to get rid of your targets without getting caught. So how hard is it to, like, clear a level? Because I'm looking at this thing. There are a lot of people everywhere and the cops just showed yeah, up. Yeah, the cops just showed up. Uh, they spot him and he's about to throw a grenade. And that didn't work, and well, hey, Alex, come on. You can okay. do better. Yeah. Are you your dev game, or what's going on? Do you guys play your game? <laughs> you guys probably play your game too much. No, we, we actually don't. This is the first time we're playing it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but the game, um, you know what's exciting about these kind of games is that they're actually built on multiple layers of systems. Right. So there are events that happen that you cannot really predict when they're going to happen. Uh, because, like, you know, the placement of uh, certain objects, of certain crowds, of certain behaviors, it's all procedural. So that means that there's not going to be uh, exactly the same experience between two different players. So like for example, he has a forklift that spawned and yeah, you, know, you can do things with it, you can lift things. You can probably you know, run into a crowd of people. Very slowly, no you can't! You're Very too slowly, slow. you can chase them into the party, right? There's nothing uh, bad going on here. That's a nice show up in the party. <laughs> oh, you, you're actually going to roll into the party. <laughs> <laughs> Again, it's too steep for the forklift. Yeah. He oh, oh you just avoided the bouncer. The bouncer was like, oh, what's happening here? The bouncer's like yelling at the forklift for blocking yep. the path now. Yeah, and then oh, uh, he drove that Ferrari into a forklift, and now it's a barbecue. <laughs> <laughs> it's also like, unlike, you mentioned hatred, unlike that game, this game is very stylistic. Yeah, and it's like it's not realistic, which is probably it's you know, very it's good. stylized. Like yeah. I mean, uh, one of the Easter eggs here is that um, uh, an alien spaceship can uh, come into the party and like hover over it, and then uh, you go, well, aliens are going to kill it. No, you you can just party on the spaceship. It's all fine. <laughs> We're all friends here. Talk about what you guys learned from Party uh, uh, Hard Cut Tycoon and Party Hard One that you've applied and improved on in the sequel. Well, uh, you know, Party Hard's orig original design was a happy accident conceived in a very short amount of time, right? And uh, as we're working on this, we actually realized a lot of things that happened by accident in the original design, 
And uh, the learning there was that, you know, we thought it was just like a scrappy prototype, but a lot of the things in it were really genius. So uh, for us, uh, the biggest takeaway was that it's very important to constantly surprise people, right? And then when you surprise people uh, and they realize that it's a unique thing that probably happened mostly to them and not to, to many other people, you're going to uh, make them share their experience. And it's all about building a game that people want to share. Now, see, I want to talk about, because you said the first game was a Game Jam game. Yeah. Now, I know what that is, but some people watching may not know, so explain what Game Jam is, because it's really impressive. Some of the best games we've seen at GDC were getting here are yeah. Game Jam yeah. games. Uh, this is actually very true for us as a publisher. Like, you know, games that have been developed in a very short time span, um, they, they get very creative because you get to focus on, like, one thing, and that one thing becomes really good. Like, for example, Party Hard was a Game Jam game for us. Cluster Truck is another game that was a Game Jam game. No Time to Explain, our very first game, was a Game Jam game. Um, because um, a lot of the time, uh, game developers are and designers are a little bit cautious about sharing their vision, their prototypes, right? And then uh, they get locked into like pre-production and then full production. And then a year later, you're afraid to show if your game is fun or not. You know, to find out if your game is fun or not. But the thing with Game Jam games is that if you hit that, that the magic formula from the get-go, you are actually almost guaranteed to get traction when the game is done as Absolutely. a full game. Absolutely. And plus, it's you get so much feedback and exposure that it's it's amazing. So talk about the role the chickens play because there's so many of them, and I, I, he uh, he just got yelled at from for killing chickens. Yeah, and Alex, what do the chickens do? Um, I honestly don't know. <laughs> this is very new in the in the build. Yeah, you put chickens out, put chickens in. Are you making McNuggets? Uh, I can talk about chickens. That's a private life for chickens, yeah. We can talk about it. Well, they you just, just let like 50 of them out of that little box for some reason. You can't That's... have enough chickens in game. The more, the better. Yeah. <laughs> are those people sleeping? Right yeah, yeah, they are. They're sleeping. <laughs> uh, they took some medicine, some sleeping pills, and they're sleeping. Oh, wow. So we're going to punish them for that. So because, like you mentioned, the game is... Uh, the levels are procedurally generated, but the people are, right? Yeah, uh, okay. the levels are, uh, you know, the main geometry of the levels um, is standardized, but then there are uh, items within the levels and certain things that get procedurally dropped in. Like so, you, talk about some of the weapons and items you find in the game and can use. You, you, we see knives and grenades so far. Yes, yeah, so the knife is your main weapon, right? And then there are things like, you know, you find the gas canister. Then you fill it with fuel, or it might already be filled with fuel, and then you just kind of like pour a little bit here, you know, like make a little trace, and then you know, like light it on fire, and then <laughs> have a barbecue with chickens. It's it's all about giving the player a variety of ways to complete a task, right? And like playing the way they want and when it, when playing the way they enjoy most. That's yeah, so like, cool. That is so fun. So we've seen some very disturbing stuff happen here on the back show floor <laughs> that we're not sure how to deal with. Like, there was a player that stacked a stash of bodies, of murdered bodies, on in one side, lit them on <coughs> with gasoline, and then lit them on fire. And we're just standing here going like, uh, uh, sure, that makes a good gift. <laughs> well, does it get rid of the bodies? Yeah, I mean. Well, there you go. Then he was getting rid of the body, getting rid of the evidence. Sure, sure. <laughs> well, like, you know, you know, it doesn't matter because you're murdering in any game. You're murdering people in Skyrim. You're murdering yep. people in Mario Brothers. You know, yeah, just, just like what, what Alex is doing here. Um, I'm not sure what to think of. I think you have some issues, man. You see, what do you? Oh my! Oh my lord! Oops! <laughs> some people are still dancing. I well, like you gotta party hard, right? You do gotta party hard. It doesn't matter. You know, the roof is on fire. You gotta party. So you can also. I saw your character dance. You can also like go on the dance floor yeah. and just dance, right? Yeah, you can actually dance. <laughs> Fine. Oh my god, you turned into dust. <laughs> uh -huh. Yeah, but the game is uh, it, its a mix of stealth, tactical gameplay, where you eliminate targets, and the best part is that you can play aggressively, but that's very risky. It's just that Alex is just very good here with playing aggressively. Typically, uh, players will play uh, very silently and just like you know, lure enemies out and deal with them one by one. Now, you mentioned like Hitman was kind of an inspiration when you were designing this. Are you going to have multiplayer in the game where like people set up targets and try to take them out a certain way or set up scenarios? Right now, we're not going to promise anything. We just want to like make the sequel as a proper sequel for the original game. Uh, and then we'll see. We'll see. 
you want to finish the game you're working on first we're gonna start talking about adding a bunch of other stuff to oh, it yeah. that we're not ready here for yet because I I remember um, for some reason Tycoon sticks out in my head when you guys are making that because I had to get drugs and like beer to the party and it was like I had to make it a good party and now, you, now you're basically taking that concept you just got run going. over by the cops yeah. you got <laughs> oh my god <laughs> There's so much things that, hey, he totally missed you. These people are blind, I oh, tell yeah. you, you're blind. And you know it's not a party until the cops show up. What, they took someone else away? Yeah, yeah. so you can actually frame other NPCs. Wait, you can frame other people? Yeah. <laughs> uh, so each NPC actually has a suspicion meter that, uh, depending on what they see, uh, makes them suspicious of certain NPCs or your, yourself as the player. And you can make it so that uh, other people will point to like, oh, I saw this guy next to the mirror. Oh my god! Or okay. next is a murder that occurred. Look at this chicken. You need to, <laughs> you need to talk. Okay, talk, I didn't know that. That's that's incredible. So you can actually like, just yeah. and then they go away and then you're you're nor nor right. you your 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 job. So talk about the icon. The icon is switching colors in the lower left hand corner. What what is it when it changes to that red and black? What does that do? Oh, uh, when it changes to that, um, you ha actually have a special ability that allows you to kill a whole bunch of people within a certain radius. So just like that, see? Uh, and that's the ability. So uh, it fills up and you can use it every now and then. It's useful for when you're being surrounded by aggressive NPCs to get rid of all of them at once. Or uh, you know, when you just want to have uh, some personal space, because I think that's an issue in America, right? People love their personal space. They love my personal As space. As European, I find it weird. <laughs> so talk about like your uh, the character you play, as I see him in the corner as well. Is that what you look like? Is there different versions of that? Or is that what he looks like all the time? Um, the original had the uh, original character, who turned out to be uh, Detective John West. Spoilers for everyone who hasn't yeah, played been the original. has been out for a while. You can't, be, yeah, you can't yeah. get angry. Uh, we are actually not talking about who this guy is. That's going to be a surprise for everyone. And the way that we twist the story on the sequel, I think a lot of players, of uh, a lot of fans of the original are going to appreciate. I'm really excited about that. Alex just burned down a car and then danced while he was doing it. Oh, yeah. I think I think there's a lot of positive things you can say about this game because you can do whatever you want, and you don't have to. You, you don't have to even stop the party. You can join it and just party if you want to. I mean, a it's lot not going to be very fun, too, right? but you know that's just how it works. Do you guys have any uh, drug mechanics in the game or anything like that? Any like? Uh, not right now. No. Not right now. So talk about the other mechanics because you keep telling me you have these other mechanics <laughs> every single time. I say that's cool. Well, that's a mechanic. I'm like, how many mechanics do you have in this game? Um, it really depends uh, per level, right? Uh, because uh, some of the mechanics are universal. Like, uh, you know, you can do the lysing, you can uh, typically explode a few things in a level. Uh, but then when you um, design uh, universal mechanics, you actually want to build off custom things. So um, I, I'm not going to spoil exactly what we're going to have here because uh, there will be surprises. But uh, if you remember the original, in the original you could have all of a sudden zombies come in and start spreading infection and party. So you can expect silly things like that from the sequel. So talk about that mode he just switched to where everything went green. What is oh that yeah, something that you is, interact uh, with? That's kind of similar to uh, Hitman's, um, uh, I think it was called uh, Assassin Mode, uh, where you get an idea of what items are interactive around you. So what other levels can we, right now this is like a nightclub, what other yeah. levels can we expect from Party Hard 2? Um, there is a really cool uh, skiing level that looks like nothing else you've seen in the game. Uh, like, a, like, a ski, like a ski lodge or like a... Yeah, like a ski lodge. Okay, yeah. okay. Yeah, uh, there is multiple clubs, multiple parties, and uh, there is a uh, TV station, which uh, is the center of the story. Interesting. So that yeah. may or may not have to do with our protagonist Maybe or not. antagonist in this case. You never know. We never know. We're aiming for about a dozen levels. Uh, we have a lot of prototypes, and uh, we're at the stage where uh, all of the mechanics are in, uh, and the core story is now wrapping all of those levels together. You still gotta tell me what's going on with the chickens, man. I mean, well, you like, know, normally, okay, don't it, you like KFC? In, well, in normal games, when you kill something small like a chicken, the body just disappears, so you don't need to hide it, but I've seen NPCs hey. freak out about chicken bodies. The chickens need to party. Right? <laughs> it's a chicken party. Yeah. Chicken party. Oops. Oh, jeez. Can oh. you... Oh, 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 oh. So close. Yeah. That just happened. <laughs> Can you spell your name out in uh, in, in gasoline <laughs> and light it on fire? <laughs> yep. 
Yes, you could. <laughs> we'll never know who did this. It says Alex right here. Did he <laughs> They just spelled your name. Or like yeah, that. right. <laughs> yeah, this game looks really, really, really cool. How, how do you like to play personally? Do you like to play more stealthy? Do you like to go like just all out? Typically, I play these games like I try to rush like a maniac, and then I'll fail like seven times, and then take my time and be patient with it. What What do you see like? Uh, you mentioned Twitch has is a bit eyes on Twitch. What do you feel like speed running in this game would be like? Uh, speed running through this game is something that uh, a lot of people did, uh, but what we actually have uh, is Twitch integration, which means that the chat can participate in the game while someone is streaming it. So you can uh, expect things like, you know, uh, people would be able to vote on certain events that happen. Like, well, what if right now um, an alien spaceship comes and starts to ruin the party? Or uh, what if a whole bunch of uh, cops show up? Or what if a party bus comes in with new people that are aggressive NPCs? All of those things can be done uh, by the viewers. And uh, actually, uh, the viewers can either help the streamer or mess with him. And it's been amazing to watch when we launched the original. People just like being playing the game for 10 hours and their community just messing with them. It was amazing. So the cops just came again, but they're not they're not going toward you because they didn't see you. Are they looking for you? Yeah, they are. Okay. There is a suspicion meter uh, going up, uh, and depending on uh, whether or not you had direct line of sight or whether you were caught doing the murder or if someone saw you do the murder, um, it uh, impacts the behavior of cops. Okay. Should I talk about some of the, the stuff on the in the game? Like you have the you have lungs. Like what are the lungs doing? I also see like when the cops show up, I see the red and blue lights, but there's also a meter on the inside. Of Meter, yeah, uh, there are suspicion meters. Uh, there's basically a danger meter of uh, how um, you know how cops are um, going to react to you. Uh, also, uh, if you've been a really bad person, then a SWAT team might show up. <laughs> and you know, uh, depending on how you like playing these games, like I've seen way too many people just kill bodies off one by one and just stash them in the dumpster and like play like very clean, like nothing. Is that, is, that, is that a better way to play? It's a way to play. Uh, it definitely takes answer. more time, uh, but then you can score more points because you, well, you know, you you don't get caught at all. So that's your meter at the top, when it has yep. the, hour, the magnifying glass, yep. and then what's that? What's the Running Man logo right there? The person. Uh, what was what? The, the Running Man logo because he had the ma he had the magnifying glass and then it went to like a person logo running. Right. Uh, that is um, like when. Um, you, the cop is chasing you, uh, he's not going to chase you forever. So uh, if those meters are really low, then you can actually get away from the cop quite easily. What's your favorite weapon in the game? My favorite weapon is still the original, the stabby, stabby weapon. The knife, the knife the weapons? Knife, yeah. Alex, what's your favorite? Other Alex? Alex explodes things and kill chickens. I can tell. <laughs> I can yeah, tell because you've, <laughs> you've been... You're you've the been, chicken hunter. Yeah, I'm a chicken hunter. You've been murdering... We've been murdering chickens all night. Yeah. You guys, when does the game come out and what platform will it be on? It's going to be this year, hoping. 2018. Hoping this year. Sometime in 2018. Uh, we're going to launch on PC and something else. That's something else we're going to announce closer to launch. Oh, I hope it's Nintendo Switch because, as we were talking about earlier, Alex, everything needs to be on Nintendo Switch. What does this Nintendo Switch thing? Inacceptable. It's kind of like an iPad, but good. Oh, okay. Good. Yeah, so like No, iPad. I love my Switch. This actually wouldn't be Breath good. Breath the Wild, this all the way. This wouldn't be bad on mobile either. I could see this on an iPad. The original uh, has come out on mobile and did really well. Did, Ty did Tycoon come out on mobile? No. no. Make it happen. Maybe. 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 All right, you guys. Thank you guys so much for sticking with us. Alex and Alex a lot. for Party Hard 2. And, and they, chickens. And they do, yeah. in fact, Party Hard 2 with chickens and gasoline and grenades. So for more interviews like this, more streaming, stick around, twitch.tv slash Shaq News. Do it for Shaq News, PAX East 2018. Killing chickens.